I always want to look at the screen, so it's a problem. <laughs> okay. Look at the camera. It's right here. Right there. All right. It's Monday morning. We're back for another episode of Building the Nantahala Retreat. How was your drive to work? Pretty uneventful, really. Monday morning. Kind of same old, same old. Well, how was yours? Well, as I crossed the Sandlin Bridge, yeah. the sun was coming through the fog. And right as I got to the middle of the bridge, a bald eagle <laughs> punches through the fog and is right by my driver's side window. And I locked what? eyes with the eagle. So he looked at you. Yeah. And he was like, ah! So wow. it was like the best drive I've ever had. Wow. Yep. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> Me neither. What's going on with your hair today? You got some product in there? <laughs> A little bit, one. <laughs> you went to Florida, didn't you? I did. It's amazing how hey, old one in Rome, come back. One in Rome, bro. You got to <laughs> do what the Romans do. Our first task for the day was to clean up a ladybug invasion, which is something that happens around here in the fall for a couple weeks. For some reason, there's a billion ladybugs everywhere. And since we don't have any doorknobs on and some doors not installed to the outside, they like to come inside here to stay a little warmer at night. They clump together and they can number in thousands. No problem. <laughs> it's crazy. I, it is crazy. Did they import these things too, did I think? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a mean, conspiracy. Uh, it's a government conspiracy to some people around here. I mean, it's like, look, check it up everywhere. Like they're just hanging everywhere yeah. up here. I don't even want to talk about what we're really doing today. We've been avoiding it, but we finally have to do it. And that's tile showers, which is not my favorite thing. We don't have the little pencil bullnose pieces, trim pieces to go with the tile. That's another snag, but we're going to start anyway. Jamie's got some ideas how to kind of get around that to get going. So he's going to show us. To get around the problem, all we need are some strips of wood to represent those pieces of pencil molding. This is 5 8 by 5 8 scrap wood. We're gonna tack them to the wall with some brads and then we'll just tile right up to it as if it's the tile, pull it out later and stick in the real tile. It's a pretty good idea, actually. Appreciate that. Actually, it's going through that corner bead, I'm sure. I think they're gonna be totally cool with a wood trim shower. I don't know why you would even buy tile. <laughs> as a matter of fact, we got enough scrap wood. We could scrap wood this whole thing in here <laughs> and be done in like 10 minutes. <gasps> I've got a bunch of epoxy at home. I bet if I put enough epoxy no, on it, it no. would be just fine. It's not happening. Look, they make boats out of wood. Have you ever seen a sailboat made of wood? Yeah. Well, what's the difference? It's not happening. What's the difference? After nixing the wooden shower idea, it was time to start tiling. First, I filled in this little gap between the hardy backer and the shower base so that grouting would be easier later. I checked the shower base for level because I'm using it to level the tile, so it has to be level. And I'm mudding the back of the tile as well as the wall to get great adhesion. I'm also using a spacer from the tile to the shower base so that I have the same grout joint there as everywhere else. How's it going, bub? <laughs> you look like you're having a blast in there. I mean, I couldn't think of a better thing to be doing than sitting on my knees in a shower tile one. Hey, no hey, we got the wizard here, though. Is he yeah. telling you what to do? Yeah, no, no, I'm just trying to be quiet. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not saying, no, hey, that one's just leaning, or... <laughs> too much mud, not enough mud, too much mud. I was saying, no, but Eric, let me ask you this. Were you thinking that we might want to loosen this mud just a little bit? That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, Whatever, you weren't thinking that. I don't know. Let's, let's loosen this mud a little bit. Uh, hey, yeah, that's, no, a, good, I, I that's a good call, Eric. Just, that was a good call. Yeah. The surface that we're tiling to here is half inch hardy backer. After installing that, we sealed all of the screw holes in the seams with mesh tape and thin set. And then we rolled on two coats of this rubber membrane and that's the green stuff you see. And putting all that together, you'll actually get a pretty waterproof surface underneath the tile, which should be pretty waterproof once it's grouted as well. This is gonna be a really tricky cut around the profile of the front of the shower. Yeah, Arlo is going to cut a piece of cardboard the exact same size as a tile. We're going to cut the piece of cardboard to fit, then we're going to trace it on a piece of tile. It's going to be magic. You may be looking at this prefab pan and wondering, why did we use a prefab pan here? Well, mostly for cost. Since this is a standard size shower, we can do this and it saved the owner a lot of money versus having to build one from scratch out of concrete and a liner and then tiling over it. This is a lot less expensive. If you have a huge walk-in shower that's not a standard size, the tile base is really the only option. That's pretty good. There's our next cut. Good luck with that, <laughs> sir. 
What in the world is this crap? It's your template. Dude, that's the nastiest looking thing I've ever seen in my life. Arlo wants to see if it fits first, but I don't. <laughs> we held it, we held the cardboard on it as we ground. Really? Which, yeah, which worked pretty good. Okay. Arlo, uh, test fit it. I don't know. I'm scared. I don't want to break that little piece off. Ooh. I mean, that's pretty good. It could, it could use a little out here, you think? Yeah, just a little bit. Just to tip it, right? Yeah. And, and, and maybe, maybe just a, a maybe little a bit tip, right here. A tip right there. And yeah, we little, said a little, a little bit. Tip right there. And That's pretty the fun much part to cut anyway. <laughs> okay. That's a nice shirt. True work. It's Monday morning. I it's thought I'd dress up a little bit nice. You know, it's fall time, so got my flannel going. True working it a little bit, but uh, beautiful. Really, what what's going on is is inside here. See, see that right there. <laughs> Okay. See that? Let Jamie talk. Okay, I got it. I got anyway, it. they're on the merch store now, and I promise you, all the proceeds go towards letting Jamie talk. Some <laughs> form or fashion. Okay. I don't know how that works, but I'm pretty sure that's what happens. We dove into the cost of a tile shower briefly, but let's talk about it more because most of my homeowners that I've ever built for are shocked at the cost of a tile shower versus a prefab insert that covers the walls and everything, which is usually about four or $500. The plumber installs it no charge in about 10 minutes versus a tile shower where you have to prep the walls, waterproof the walls, then you have to buy the tile, lay the tile, and then grout the tile which is at least five to 10 times the cost in most cases, which seems outrageous, but that's just what it is. I've got a real pro tip right here. Clean your tools for lunch. And also I'm taking my shoes off because I've been standing in this stuff and I don't want to drag it down our stairs. Is somebody videoing the mountains? Yeah, yeah it's your brother. You created a freaking monster, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the guy filmed, There's nothing moving out here. The guy films everything. Okay. Everything. We gotta get this out of his hands. Let me see it. Let Jamie TL. That's the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie TL. Let Jamie TL. Mm, okay. I told you it'd be a good shot. Wow. I knew when I looked at it. I saw the shot. I knew it was good. I put the camera there. I mean. I take it back. Wow. I'll speed that up about times five. What else is there to it? It'll look amazing. This video is sponsored by Keeps, and they've been a longtime sponsor of our channel, and we really appreciate that. With Keeps, you can get your hair loss medication online. You don't have to drive down to the doctor's office. You don't have to go stand in a pharmacy line, and they'll send you three months supply at a time right to your driveway, or actually right to your front door, which is even better. Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA-approved medications for hair loss, at about half the price you'd expect to pay at a pharmacy. I've been using Keeps myself for about six months now and it's actually made a very noticeable difference. In fact, I was at a reunion last weekend and one of my college roommates, Christoph, he kept staring at my head. He kept looking at my hair and then he finally asked me, he's like, do you have more hair than you used to have like a year ago? I said, yep. Yeah. So if you're ready to take action like I did, go to keeps.com slash Perkins. They'll give you 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash perkins thanks to keeps for sponsoring this video hey i meant to tell you a nice job on Don't that worry. tile yeah let's not do that again ah uh, there's another <laughs> side isn't there, oh, there yeah. is. actually and, and there's should, two and more there's showers two more. <laughs> you should have Dude, shut up john <laughs> i should have saved it and just flipped it over and did the back side on the other one. Oh, yeah. oh man do we, we save the, the template you didn't burn the cardboard don't you think you could, when you cut it you put one on top of the other and just cut two at once yeah, bud, how come you didn't do that? <laughs> Four. Who is this guy? Anyways. This Dude, this is the legend. The legend, yeah. Four. Aren't you supposed to be painting or something? Up next, let's check out a project that Jamie's been working on in the stairwell. We're gonna take the next little bit, about two and a half hours, probably, to tell you about these handrails. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding, I only got 30 seconds. We made these handrails back at the shop and I went ahead and installed them before we did the final coat of paint for a couple of reasons. One is if I needed to make pencil marks, I would be painting over them, they'd be covered. Also, sometimes when you suck these things tight with screws, 
they'll pop drywall pops like the nail heads or screws that are holding the drywall. And if any of that happens, I need to be able to repair that before the final coat of paint. So I think it's a good idea just to go ahead and pre-install. I'm gonna pull them off now, do the final coating on the rail and do the final coat of paint on the wall. You might notice this is a really nice looking handrail and it is, it was custom made for this job at our shop by Jamie. And he really likes making these one reason is that handrails really need to be strong. And we found that using wood and other types of materials, they just weren't as strong as we wanted them to be. Doing these in one piece like this with the returns bolting to the wall is a huge upgrade. And I wish I had one at my house. Maybe one day I can convince Jamie to take a little time to build one for me. Gonna have to do, he's doing yoga to get <laughs> yeah, thing just to get, get him to that bucket. Here. You know what the kids tell me is uh, do it for the gram. So, do it for a gram, do it for the for the that means oh. for Instagram. Oh, do, do it, it for Instagram for the gram. Oh, I was having flashbacks in the 70s. The tile we're using here is approximately six by six. It has this mottled finish in it, so it's not completely the same color throughout the tile, and it's glazed, which should make it easy to clean the grouting off. Another feature that you need in a shower is somewhere to put your shampoo and soap. And if you're doing a tile shower like this, a corner shelf is usually the least expensive option. These were about 60 bucks each. I'm setting them on the tile below, leaving a grout joint and making sure that they actually pitch away from the wall. Another option is to do a built-in niche, which recesses into the wall, but those cost a lot more money because you have a lot of tile work and bull nose that needs to go around that. So that's just a more expensive option that we do sometimes. I'm taking a break and let Jamie take over. You know, let Jamie tile. Oh, it says talk. Yeah, I thought it said let Jamie tile. It's not a misprint there, but <laughs> talk. Talk. Dude, Talking, when, not last, tiling. When's the last time you tiled? I don't know. It's been too soon ago, though. <laughs> too soon ago? Too soon ago. I know that much. Hey, shh, huh? if we just don't go in there, maybe Marlo will just do it. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he can't help himself. Marlo, you're doing a great job, buddy. Keep it up. We'll be back in like a half hour. <laughs> okay. Uh, Wednesday or Thursday, <laughs> maybe. J-Mo, J-Mo, J-Mo. I don't believe all the hype. Dude, know. jump in there. Show your brother what's uh, up. We'll see. We'll have a competition. I mean, the bottom I don't, half I don't, is better or the top half I don't better. want to make him look bad, okay? I'm going to go kind of slow just to even it out. You, you, know? you don't need any help for that. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to think of a little trick here to help us out. We've got a place here. We're going to have two tiles meeting from the ceiling and the wall. Now, I don't want one of them to overlap the other like that. Or anything like that because the grout then would be applied to the face of a tile and it right. won't stick i think it would chip out so what we need is a joint that looks like this if you can see something like that where the grout's really going to lock in and if you just hold a scrap tile up it doesn't stick out far enough because you don't have mud behind it oh, like you're the going to the thickness of the mud that's isn't... right okay so what arlo is doing right now is taping up cardboard to the back of a tile to represent the thickness of the mud on the <laughs> ceiling. Okay, so there's the thickness of the mud behind. And then yeah. we can just hold that up as and a measure. dummy. Measure. And, and here comes a dummy. And then joke. we can yeah. we can measure the rip. Ooh, it's oh, it's not going to be much. Oh my gosh. Ooh, wow. See, it's not much. Ooh. That made a big difference, didn't it? Yeah. Okay, let's let's see without. Ooh. Let's see without. This is Okay, that's almost an inch. Yep. Or if I backed it up, it would be an inch yep. tight. But with the mud behind it here, it's almost nothing. It's 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 almost just a grout it's joint. Almost just so a grout me, joint. Let me ask you this, Jamie. Mm. What do you think about smearing on mud? Do you think anybody would see it? Like just, build it out just a little just more. Just build it out up to here. We today? Could feather it out. Feather, feather it, it out. I think we should do that. I could feather anything. that out. <laughs> Give me a feather. <laughs> Go give me a feather. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is going on? I can butter it out. Go give me some butter. Okay, so what we're if, not going to do the whoa, 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 whoa. What if you just like put extra mud behind it to make it stick up farther? Exactly. Or, oh, wow. <laughs> when that That's works? exactly it. When I don't we're, know. We're going to nail more cardboard back there, but anyways. Yeah, what is nail cardboard up? <laughs> I don't know why we're doing that. What is that? What? What do you that? mean? What is that? special.
We're back at it. <laughs> yeah. But yesterday we got ahead of ourselves because we had already laid this row of tile, right? You know, you ever feel like somebody's going behind you and undoing all the work that you did? <laughs> That's what we did. I called Jason after I'd already left, said, rip this off before it sets because it's supposed to be that kind of tile, a border tile, and we forgot. Accent. Accent tile. So we kind of had an we're, accident. We're working up. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to start cutting those accent tiles to fill this in. It's going to accentuate what's going on in here. I think people get that. <laughs> Our accent tile is these one foot by one foot river rock mosaics, and they have an irregular edge, but they're actually made to where they interlock and they look like they're one solid piece. And it's a bit of work to kind of figure out how you're gonna cut this so that you have the least amount of little pieces that you have to replace later. And we needed six inches, which was the maximum I could get out of this. So I just cut it down the middle and then had to use the little cutoff bits to fill in the irregular edges everywhere else. Wow, what is that, Picasso? <laughs> I've been working hard with artistic skills this morning. <laughs> Got to get it up here without dropping all these. Let's see these little bits and stuff that I've just sort of placed artistically. I got to get it upstairs without dumping them. Okay. Hold it flat, you know. Meanwhile, Jamie was finishing up the tile on this sloped ceiling, which I was a little worried about. I've never really tiled a ceiling, so I wasn't sure how well it would stick or if it'd want to come off. <laughs> I think some people might wonder how the tile's sticking to the ceiling and not coming off. It, it, I don't know. It's, it's just magic. <laughs> I mean, we're surprised actually how well it's sticking. Um, we did maybe make the mud a little thicker, stickier, stiffer, yeah. stiffer, it's, stickier. It's little, it's we didn't do anything stick. special, but just put a little less water. Yeah. It sticks pretty yeah, nice. It's, it's, I mean, watch. Hey, but I, but I am, you know, doing that quite a good, quite a good bit there. Wiggle, jiggle. It's anti-gravity mud. Everybody knows about that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. With the ceiling finished, the only job left on laying tile here was to get this river running through our shower. And this fits the mountain motif pretty well here. This is exactly the kind of stone you'd find if you went down to the creek and grabbed a handful off the bottom. Jamie's using little pieces of cardboard as spacers for these little bits of stone that have to go around the top and bottom. And he's also using bits of cardboard to space some of the pieces that are glued to the mosaic to get them spaced properly and match everything else. And going back to cost, a detail like this takes a lot more time than a regular row of tile. And that's why we usually do our tile showers by the hour instead of giving the cost in the bid. Little things like this can take a lot more time. We're taking advantage of this time while the thin set is still a little bit soft. We just did this yesterday evening and it's first thing in the morning. So we can actually remove the little bits here pretty easily right now that are sticking out where the grout is gonna be. And I left that on purpose yesterday because I wanted those areas to hold the stones in place. And I sort of purposefully, purposefully, I purposefully pressed the stones in hard enough to have the mud squeeze out between them, knowing that they would be stuck on there very well and knowing that um, I can scrape this mud out later. And I know this is getting to be a long video about one tile shower, but all we have left is sticking these mosaics on the left and right of the shower, and this thing is done, ready for grout. Hey, thanks for building with us today. We really appreciate it. And if you've enjoyed the video, please remember to get subscribed, give us a thumbs up. Thanks again to Keeps for sponsoring this video and we will see you on the next one.